Welcome to Capo Racer Garage, I'm Dan, giving you the skills and inspiration that you need to build a motorcycle that you can be proud of. In this video, I'm gonna show you a handful of tools which I use on a regular basis. They're inexpensive, but I guarantee if you have them, you will definitely use them and wonder how you did without them. I've put a lot of thought into this list because there's gonna be some of you which have some of these tools and some of you which don't have any of these tools. And so therefore, I can almost guarantee there's gonna be something on this list that you don't have and you'll be like, damn, that's handy. If you do have everything on this list, please leave me a comment and let me know. I'd be very surprised if you do. So the first thing on the list is the tap and die set. I use this extremely often. It is not just good for cutting threads, but it's also good for if you get things painted or powder coated and you can run one of these guys through one of the holes that you've actually painted or powder coated and it clears out the thread perfectly and you can put your nut and bolt on. Uh, also, quick little handy tip for this one, if you're going to get one of these and it's not a really expensive one, like this is an inexpensive kit, make sure you get a bit of foam or cardboard or something and put it on there so that when you do open it next time, all of these haven't jumped around and moved and you're trying to figure out what's what because the writing on them is extremely small on the small ones. Also, if it doesn't have the size, cut it off the packaging, stick it on the inside, just makes things easier for you. So being the tap and die set is item number one, if you have used one of these things, this is the part that comes in the kit. You pretty much just turn it down into the thread and so on. They're good, but a bit cumbersome until I found these things. These are awesome. If you have a tap and die set, definitely get yourself one of these. They come in different sizes and what they are is a ratchet. They have a locking in the middle and then a forward and a reverse. And I'll tell you what, man, it's so much better. So much better. So yeah, definitely recommend these if you have a tap and die set or if you don't have a tap and die set and you're gonna buy one, definitely get yourself a set of these. They're different sizes because they take the different size taps. So highly recommended. There's gonna be an Amazon link to all of the items I'm mentioning in the description as well as pinned in the first comment. So if there's any of these things you wanna go and check out, by all means, go for it. And another thing on the list that you may or may not already have, which is a set of verniers. They are so good because you can measure the outside of something you can measure the inside of something. You can also measure the depth of something. So they also very handy for scribing, which I'll show you in a sec. So if for instance, you've got a bit of steel like this and you want to drill a series of holes or you want to cut a nice straight line, you have a nice straight edge to go off. All you have to do is get your verniers, set how far off that edge you want to be, lock it, and then away you go. You can go both ways and voila. You have a perfect scribe line ready to roll. So you can actually buy a proper scribe. Uh, they are something that you just set the depth, lock it, and then away you go. And it does exactly the same thing as the verniers. So the next two items are something that go hand in hand. And let's be honest, if you're gonna build something, you're gonna have to drill holes at some point. We've all been that person that's tried to drill a hole and the damn drill bit is just wandering like crazy. This is a bit of an exaggeration, but I'm sure you know exactly what I'm talking about. The first one's pretty self-explanatory. It's just a center punch. It's spring-loaded. You don't need a hammer or anything. Just work out where you want to push it and off you go. These things are fantastic. I've bought two of these years ago and I've still got the same two. You just can't seem to kill them. So the next item, not so obvious. These are called center drills. I don't know exactly how they work. They just work. When you're starting a drill hole, use these guys first. They're super rigid, so they're actually neck down and they just have this tiny little tip. There's different sizes, obviously. And when you're starting to do that first pilot hole, they just are so good. I don't know why. There must be the taper of the actual cut. If you do know exactly why these work so well, please let me know. I haven't actually researched it. I just know that they work and I use them all the time. I know these are prominently meant to be used in a lathe, but if you've ever used one in a drill, you know exactly why they're on the list. And they also do a little bit of a countersink for you, depending on how deep you go with them. So the next item I can almost guarantee that you won't have, I use it all of the time. It's actually being used right now on the Virago. I use this little guy for setting heights. It doesn't take a lot of weight, but it's just a little scissor lift. They're super inexpensive, but man, the amount of things that I've used it for, even when I'm using a saw and I'm cutting like a cutoff saw, just to get the excess material that's hanging off the end of the saw. I use it for that, just so that I can adjust the height of that. It, like I said, it doesn't take a lot of weight, but man, is it handy because you, otherwise, what do you've got to do? You've got to get a whole bunch of different size blocks and you've got to line them up and try and get to the perfect height that you need and you don't have enough blocks and then you've got to cut one down. This thing, you just put it there and adjust the height and boom, away you go. 
I guess it's one of those items which I randomly purchased and didn't realize how handy it was going to be. And I can tell you what, I've done the opposite as well. I bought plenty of things which have been completely useless. Maybe I should make a video on the crap that I bought that was completely useless. Don't buy it. Let me know in the comments if you think that'd be a good video. And if you are building or own a motorcycle, don't forget I do have discount links to pass on to you from the suspension store. 10% off store wide for all their custom shocks. It's the same shocks that I use. And these things are the most affordable, best quality shocks you can get on the market in my opinion. Also 10% off store wide and quad lock for all of your phone mounting accessories. And for all of my Aussie followers, if you're worried about your bike getting stolen and you want to get a GPS tracker, Solid GPS is the same one that I'm using. I can offer you two months free if you use the link in the description below. So the next item is not for everybody unless you've got an air compressor, which is the 90 degree die grinder. These things are fantastic because you can get in some places you just can't get with anything else. You can get different pads for them, which are like sanding discs as well as linishing pads, which are the scotch bright ones. So you can swap them out really fast and pretty much just, they just screw on. I use this thing a lot, but I also use this guy as well, which is an air file, which once again, you need an air compressor to run it. Um, I probably use this guy more often, but it all depends on what you're doing. I would highly recommend both of these, but if you had pretty much a choice, this is the one I use all the time. But that's me personally, you might be different. The next item is a right angled screwdriver. Yes, this thing is so handy because if you have a set of carbies which are mounted on the bike, if you ever tried taking the bowl off, you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about. You just can't get in there sometimes, but these things are fantastic. Once again, it doesn't matter which brand you get. I'll leave a link in the description to the one I recommend, but there's a forward, there's a reverse, and you can pretty much change out the bits depending on what you have or what height you want that thing to be at. So really, really handy, right angled screwdriver. So this item is probably the least used out of everything on this list. However, it's still inexpensive and super handy to have when you need it. What it is, it's an angle finder. This thing is so good. It's what I used to get the line on the tank for the CB750 to marry up with the exhaust line so that the lines were pretty much, you know, working. It's really, really cool. Uh, like I said, inexpensive, super handy to have, and you know, it's magnetic as well. So it'll stick onto things. And the next item is exactly that. It's a magnet. It's a magnet on a stick if you don't have one. Just buy one, they're so cheap, they're so worth it. This one I use sometimes to try and fish things out of my vapor blaster over there. Uh, in the bottom of the hopper, when the small little bits and pieces fall down there, you don't know. When you get down there and fish it out if it's magnetic. But speaking of magnets, these guys are also really good. They're rare earth magnets, super strong. Like when you get the two things together, you're trying to peel these off. I use them, once again, all the time for all sorts of things. I even put them at the bottom of a hole. If I'm drilling a hole, like when I was putting my CB750 back together, the final assembly, I put it at the bottom of the hole and then put a bit of plastic over it and then drilled the hole so that when I'd finished drilling the hole, all the swarf from the hole in the middle had gone onto the plastic and the magnet and then just scooped it up and put it in the bin. They're just really good for all sorts of different things. Holding two things together while you tack them, they're just, yeah. So just a couple more things on the list and then I'm gonna show you some bonus items at the very end which are really inexpensive and things that I use all of the time. But the next one is a set of long shockets. Shockets? Sockets. Uh, these things are so valuable because you can just get into those places like getting down in a hole where there's a bolt or a nut, uh, you can pretty much, you know, if you've got something like a bolt head and you can go down over the top of it and then you can get to the nut and undo the nut uh, they're just so valuable for just all sorts of little bits and pieces. I didn't have any for so long and I just struggled and then eventually I bought them and I just sit them on top of my toolbox and I use them all the time. The second last item on the bonus list is this profile gauge. They are awesome because you can pretty much mimic whatever shape that you have. Say for instance, the shape of the top of the tire so you can make a mud guard or the shape of the hoop. You can just transfer that shape instantly. For example, you push it around the shape that you want to mimic. And then all you have to do is lock it so fast to just transfer that shape straight over to your cardboard template or your steel or your aluminium or whatever you're making the thing out of and away you go. So the very last bonus item, which you think, Dan, we've got pens, we don't need pens, but it is a pen. It is a necked down pen, which I use all of the time because sometimes you want to get in a hole. Say for instance, you want to mark, could be, 
a bit of rectangular hollow, hollow section that's got a hole all the way through and you can't get a normal pen down there because the hole might be really small. So you can get this thing right down there and mark exactly where that hole is. So that is handy. I've got a few different ones. These ones are like crayon type. I've got heaps of them, but I use them all of the time. They're super inexpensive, but put them on your list. If you haven't seen the tools required video I did on how to build a cafe racer, it's a really good video. I'll leave it right here.